Hey guys, welcome back. So we are at the point where we're kind of concentrating on a show. And, um, well, instead of making more flower canes and more kaleidoscope canes, I want to start using stuff that I can actually put in jewelry. So I have two different things when I'm using the same cutter for all of them. But now that I'm looking at all the colors together, I don't know if I really want this red. So I'm trying to make like a southwestern um, Makumigani. And I pulled out some ivory. This is, um, I think this is Sculpey Souffle, because that's the only one that's got the ivory. We have the turquoise. I pulled out some translucent. And then I cut out some red, which is pomegranate. And a little bit of silver. And then I pulled out some bronze for the heck of it. And I really like the bronze and the turquoise. And it kind of made the red go, eh, it's, it's just the red didn't seem to match in there now. So I'm actually going to pull the red. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I am. And I think we're just going to go with these colors. Um, I'm trying to keep it cool. So I want to use silver foil instead of gold foil. So let me get that out as well. I'll just set that right there in the mess. And basically all we're doing is we're just going to start layering the colors. So I'm going to do a bronze ivory and I think we're going to put some silver on top of this ivory and I have no particular order for these to go in I'm just putting them in wherever I see them what I think is going to look good so I'm going to do another translucent and then I'm going to do a silver and add a little bit more silver to that so these are all cut out at a um, I'm going to say about a one and a half inch, one and a half inch square. It doesn't matter. You can go bigger. You can go smaller. I just used a small one. I'm going to do some bronze and we're going to add a little more silver. And the other one that I'm going to do is with alcohol ink. And I've done the technique before, so it's not going to be new to some of you. really hot out here I have the air conditioning running but it's still not keeping everything from not sticking it's like in a triple dead uh, triple digits all week and we have a swamp cooler that we use when it's not that hot but in the summer we use our air conditioning unit and that's really bad because um, our bill gets to four or five hundred degrees or four to five hundred dollars four hundred five degrees and um, that's just not something you obviously want to see. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run this through. So, as far as thicknesses, I have everything at a 4. But I do have my translucent a little thicker. You can do a 1, you can do you, a 2, you can do a 3. Um, I think I'm using a 2 or a 3. I keep switching back and forth. So I'm going to do another bronze on top of that, and then I'll do another translucent. And again, there's no pattern, and I can stop anytime I want. But I really do like those colors together. I think those are going to look really good. Um, I think the red, let me just look at the red with this. It might not look too bad, but I don't know. I went ahead and went against it. And I am getting really close to being out of silver leaf. So we're going to have to get some more there. So we're going to do another beige. Another blue. And do a couple more translucents. I only have a couple more to go. I have this um, idea of donuts, attaching donuts together in a bracelet and a necklace. And so I wanted it to have a color that will look good on all sides. And this is what I ended up coming up with. 
So I think we're going to finish off with either bronze or blue. I feel like I can use a little more silver. So we're just going to come in here and if it looks like I could use more somewhere, then that's what I'm going to do. All right, I think I can make one more translucent. So I'm going to do one more white, or ivory, I'm sorry. I'm going to do one more translucent. And as you can see, I'm not really worried if it doesn't all fit in there. Just going to pop that in there. Add a little more of that, and there we go. So this is all extra. Oop, that is not silver foil. Okay, so we're going to put this to the side. Okay, so now we're going to sandwich this. We're just going to go back and forth. I got a little bit of gold on there from something else. Okay, I'll just do this one more time. Just going to kind of straighten it up and we're going to just cut it in half and that's our slices they both end with blue i'm going to do the same thing too much because I don't want to lose all those lines so now we're just going to kind of make it more of a rectangle and then we're going to put in our cut so I'm going to move this for a minute and this is something I had already started and this is going to take a while so that's why I'm going to kind of do it now and this one will probably end up being in part two of this. So I'm pulling out some um, Ranger Rick alcohol ink. This is turquoise. Um, this is snow cap, which is white. And I just want a nice cinnamon or a latte color. Espresso. Ooh, espresso might be a little dark. Let me see how that's going to look. Ooh, that's really dark. And it's kind of like an ugly brown. Butterscotch. Ah, that might actually work. So we're going to grab some butterscotch. And let me see if I have one more color out here. I have way too many alcohol inks here. John, I uh, will pull that out. I don't know if I want yellow, but it always seems like I have more blues and purples than anything. There's a latte. All right. Okay, I think I already did. Oh, I do like that butterscotch. Okay, so let me try the Dijon real quick. Eh. And this is the latte. Uh, which really isn't too bad either, but we're going to go with these three. <clears throat> so this is going to take a while to absorb into it and dry. So we're just adding the turquoise to one pile. I'm putting a little extra because 
I'm going to put my hands through it in a minute. And in this big pile, we're going to add the butterscotch. And this one, we're going to add the white. It's so thin. And I did have gloves, and of course I ran out. So the other thing you can do is so you don't have gloves is you can use plastic wrap over your fingers. Or you can just stick your fingers in there and get really, really dirty. If I'm in a hurry, I don't even bother. I just throw my hands in there and I didn't cut a big strip of this so I don't even know why I'm using it but yeah see to me it's easier just using my hands so maybe I just like making a mess it's fun to play with this so we're just gonna coat that really well and it doesn't matter if these get on each other and if your strips are a little too big just Stick your nails in there and just wipe it off. And I have a towel here. Now we're going to do that same thing with the brown. Brown's a little light. So I'm going to take some of that latte. And we're just going to add a little bit of dark to that. And we're not really going to mix it. We're just going to kind of leave it like that. And then we're going to come in here and do the white. Okay, and then we'll let that dry. And we'll probably add a little bit more white because white's usually the hardest. Okay, so now we're just going to set this aside. That will probably be part two because I have a feeling it's going to take overnight to dry that anyways. So let me go ahead and wipe my hands off and I'll be right back. Okay, so we are back and now it's time to have some fun. So we're just going to grab a silver um, circle. And I always make the same shape. I always go the ends. Probably do a smaller one. These I got at Michael's. There's like a set of 13 cutters. Um, I don't think it's the same brand. I don't even remember the brand that they used to be. But they have they have these in their brand. And um, I think it's the Sugar Factory. Something like that. So now we're just going to take a straight edge. And I'm not using the blade. I'm using the other side. And I'm just going to come in here. And crisscross back and forth and there's no particular order it's just whatever you feel like doing okay and then I'm going to flatten it all out and then we're going to do that one more time so we're going to squish all that together And I already pulled out my donuts. And I've got my donuts, I think at a, I think I have it at a three quarter of an inch up to three inch. But I'm not really big on chunky, chunky bracelets. So I'm probably going to use the one inch um, to shape these. All right, so we're going to cut this one more time. And this time we're just going to put little holes through it. And I'm just using a trusty old paintbrush to do this. And 
And then that time I was using the blade. I guess it really doesn't matter, but the thicker the blade, the more striations you're going to get into it instead of a cut. <clears throat> so you can do this one or two ways. You can either just lay down strips on both sides and make this the same on both sides or you can use a base and just put this on top or you can cut strips of this and lay it like on a base of blue or something like that I'll kind of show you what I mean oh but boy I like that so this is what we got we didn't really close it up very well so we got a few little air bubbles so I'm gonna get rid of that real quick I'm gonna squish it a little better first thing I found so this is the first thing I'll use okay okay so let me just show you really quick what I mean by placing it on a base I'm going to put this to the machine on the thickest setting, which is zero. I don't have enough. But anyways, let me kind of show you somehow, but I don't have enough. I know that. So you can basically actually, I'm going to use the top part of this for that. So you can cut little strips like this. And just lay it you know so that it's not all covering it the only problem though is when you do that it's gonna kind of look funky mm -hmm. and I would lay that on a veneer and do it but you see what I mean you can use that And so that way you have a little bit of your base. But I don't like that. So we're going to cut. I know I need about six. So I'm going to actually cut this a little thicker. I want a hole in it. So I'm going to do about three of these. Actually, I should do four to make it even. Ooh, I like that side a whole lot better. Okay, so let's put that in the middle. And I'm going to grab some paper here, and now we're just going to burnish it. You can also just roll these in a circle and flatten them and just put a circle cutter in the middle if you don't have a donut cutter. And that would make it look good too and you wouldn't have one flat edge. So I'll give you an example of that as well. There's just so many ways that you can do this. It's nighttime when the dogs are a little more quiet. Okay, the thickness depends on you. 
it's clay, so it's not going to be really heavy either way. Got a couple areas here that just do not want to meld together. So I'm just going to take this little piece just to see how thick it is. Okay, so again with that piece that we tried before if you don't have a donut cutter just make it a circle um, make sure you're using the exact amount so cut out your your base color with a circle cutter if you have one I don't know if I have really, really tiny ones. I know I make really, really tiny ones, but they're not really tall. So I don't know if they'll work with this. Okay, but that's even cute just like that as a round bead. I don't like round bracelets though. I don't think they fit on the wrist really well. So I usually go like, um, like a disc shape or lentil. So I'm going to take something that I really like. So I think like right there. Okay. And you can just squish it down like that. And you're going to put a circle in the middle. And I'm going to see if I have any small, small circle cutters. All right. Let me hit pause and let me see if I can find some. Okay, so I found some of these. You can find these on Etsy and Amazon. They're just really teeny, teeny cutters. And I probably want to go a little bigger than that. I just don't know if I have them any bigger. Okay, well this is going to have to do. So... The reason I don't like doing this by hand is because I can never get um, I can never get center. No matter how hard I try, it'll be off. This one actually looks like it's center, which is shocking to me. Okay, so you can do it this way by hand. So you don't need a cutter if you don't have one. Okay, and it's about one inch. Unfortunately, I didn't measure it, so I can't make any more like that. Okay, and if I look thickness wise, it's about where I have this. So another good thing. Okay, so now we're going to see what the difference is with the actual cutter. So we're just going to do the corner right there. And this way I'll know if I've, I've got the right amount on there. So as you can see, when you do it this way, yeah, you got a disc, but they're both about flat on the same edge, but not on this one. As you can see, one's rounded, one's square, or one's pretty flat. So you could take what I did, which I've already lost. There we go. This is why I don't like working in a mess, because I always seem to lose stuff. Let me move this over. Okay, so this way you can do that. And that way both sides are a little flat. Um, I like both ways, but the only reason I use a, obviously a donut cutter, is because of the fact that I'm really horrible at getting them center. And it probably wouldn't matter, nobody would probably even see, but if you're like me, you see it and that's bad enough. Okay, and there's going to be a bead in the middle of these, and there's probably going to be a spacer on each end for the bracelet. And the reason that got stuck was because I didn't remove the center. So that's my fault.
is definitely a Monday. Ugh. So we have a little deformed one right there. So what do we have? We have one, two. Remove that every time. So I pretty much just need six. Now if I was doing a necklace, I would probably want double that. that's sticking in there. Okay, so there's four. I'm going to add a little cornstarch to this one. And that one got stuck too. Boy, it's one of those days. It's because I'm thicker than what I normally am. This is probably, I don't know, maybe two, maybe three layers at a zero, I would think. They're pretty thick. And the thicker they are, the easier they are to get stuck. So we're going to combine that and make more. Okay, so on all these, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with that first one. Going to make sure we have that perfect circle. Um, that's not the one we did. I think that's the one we did. So we're going to grab all of that together and squish it down. And again, I don't, I don't know why I do this or how I managed to do this. But I've lost that thing that I pressed down with. And I mean, I just used it two seconds ago. It is in front of my face. I just could not see it. Okay, so we're just going to do this. And we're going to make sure that they're all touching. And that way they'll all be the same size. Okay. And that's it. So you can put a hole in them. But I usually wait until they come out of the oven. And then put the hole in. Because again, I'm horrible. And I don't want to deform these. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on a little bit of paper. And I'm going to make sure that they're the perfect circle. And if they're not, I will fix them a little bit. Okay, but what you can do now, and since you have all this, all you have to do is basically just squish all this together. Okay, take your burnish tool. And now you have another round of circles to make. I like to push them together. Actually, I'm going to take this. And I'm going to try and make what I made before. And the one thing about this is you don't have to put a backing on it. Both of the sides are going to look really close to each other. And so you don't have to worry about backing it. Which is kind of cool because if the the bracelet turns around on you. I don't think the donut would. That's a lot of area that would have to lift up to move on the other side, but um, if it did, it would still look pretty good. Okay, so again, we're just going to grab the donut, and I'm just going to throw a cornstarch again on top. 
So I really don't feel like dealing with it. And I want to make sure that this is even. Okay. I think I might be able to get two or three. One. Uh, looks like I'll get three out of this. You can bake it just like this too with the holes in the center and take them out when they're done. The only reason I say that is sometimes you will deform um, the circle. In fact, if you can put it on your baking thing and leave it there, as you press down on it, it would probably be the best to do and that way you won't destroy anything. And guess what I lost yet again? It is clear. My desk is a mess. So, it just decides to hide everywhere. Okay, so we're just going to do that. And it's about the same as this. Okay. Alright, so we're going to do that. And with the rest of these, we are just going to do what we did before. And on this, I'm just going to run it through at a zero. And I'm just going to take a regular cutter. This is three quarter of an inch. Okay, so this is where you can figure out what you got. You can take all those centers now as well and just meld them into there. And since I didn't really measure how much was in that last one, this is going to be a little bit of an experiment. So what I'm going to do is just cut a thin layer. And I'm just going to kind of wrap it around in different spots. I'm not worried about covering it all. Okay. And we're going to just push this down. And we're going to take our little thing right there. And we're going to pray that we get it in the center. <laughs> so this one's a little smaller. And as you can see, it's thinner over there than it is over there. I hate making donuts freehand. I don't know how Susan Bailey does it or how anybody does it, but... I cannot do it for the life of me. It doesn't help that I don't wear my glasses when I work. I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. Okay, so we're going to just show one more. And then I'm going to... do this with the rest of them. But I'll do that off the of camera since you pretty much have an idea of what I did. That one's a little better. Okay, so this is what we got. I'll show it up close. Hopefully you can see it. It's it's at night and my lighting in here is really bad. So you can see a couple of them. They're not quite shaped right. So I'm just going to like play with them and put them back in a circle. Here's a trick if you want to learn how to do that. If you have a cutter that will be the perfect size for it. Um, I'll try one lower. There we go. So what I do is I set this on the, the glass surface. Make sure it's touched down so that it doesn't come up. And then I just put this around it and I just kind of I just kind of play. I tap on each side like a circular motion and it'll get that right back into a circle. The reason it doesn't look like it's a circle is because my circle isn't where it's supposed to be. So everything else looks good. I'm gonna go finish that up. Um, let's check our other one really quick. Let's see if it's dry. And I'm gonna have to get this off of the surface onto something else because it's still really wet. So we'll come back and we'll do this one as well. And then probably tomorrow we'll do a part two 
to where we have it already baked, already sanded, and put it into a piece of jewelry. So I'll see you in a little bit. Hey guys, welcome back. So my grand plan of finishing this video was to sit here and create something with what I made in the first part of this video. <coughs> Unfortunately, I got really busy at work today, so I haven't had time to sand and do all that. Plus, my daughter and I have relapsed. So we're both not feeling all too good, and I know that if I don't do this now, it'll sit in my bucket until the very last minute, and you won't see how this video ends. So I decided to come in here and at least kind of, I don't know, wish-washy string it so that you can see what I'm doing. And then I have to take it apart anyways. I'm just going to throw it in the tumbler to sand it because I really don't want to hand sand. So these are the Makumigani ones that we made yesterday. So how I'm going to do this, and I know that you're not going to really be able to see what I'm doing, but just close your eyes and visualize with me. <laughs> so we're going to put a bead right here, okay? And then we're going to come through here and we're going to add seed beads. And we're going to take the seed beads up to the center. We're going to put another bead in there. Come out of the beads, put another um, bunch of seed bead on there, and then enter into a bead. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to go down and through the bead, back up, down through the bead, back up, and we're going to do this all the way across. And so there's going to be seed beads that are going to connect from this to this in the way of a carrier bead right here in the center. Okay, and then when we get to the end, we're going to come back. And again, we're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under. So there's going to be two, um, there'll be two strips of seed beads going across this. And then both of those seed bead strands are going to go into one bead. Hopefully you can visualize that. I don't know if I can, I can't draw a stick figure, so I'm not sure if I can do this. But really quick, let's see, I've got paper right here. So let me just bring you over here. So basically, you got your donuts. Whoop, yeah, I can draw really well, huh? Okay, so you got your donuts. So there's going to be a bead right in between each one. And then the seed beads will come out of that bead over the top into this bead out of there. And it's just going to go like this. So there'll be seed beads coming across there. And then coming back, I could either just keep that one and have the other side come back up through that first row of seed bead. Or I can add like a second strand. So it'll be one like that. And then we'll come back and again into that bead, into that bead, into that bead. So there'll be two strands of silver, which I'm probably looking at. Um, that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. And I hope that made sense. If it didn't, I promise when I put it together, I will tape it. It just might take me a while. Okay, so I'm going to put these aside. So these, instead of doing that with the seed beads, what I thought I would do, I have this little piece right here with a, um, just a toggle clasp. Okay. And you know how it is when you make jewelry and there's always that one component that you do not have. Well, that is me. And I mean, I've got a lot of beads. I've got too many beads. I couldn't even tell you how many beads I have. But it never fails. Every time I go to make something, I don't have the right component. So I just took a bunch of spacers. I thought head caps would look really good on this, but all the bead caps that I have they are um, too big so I might have to order some of those I'm not sure so for now we're just gonna go with the spacers they don't really look that bad and then we're just gonna kinda do this through all of them now, I tried all kinds of different blue beads. I wanted more aqua. I wanted this. I wanted that. And I couldn't get one that looked really good with it. Although an ice blue looked really nice with it. Unfortunately, I only had size 10 millimeters. And for this, I needed an 8 millimeter bead. So I settled on these for now. 
Oh, and I'm using fishing line as you can see. And I know that hole is somewhere right here. Just cannot find it. Okay, so what I did after these came out of the oven, I just I drilled through this side and then I put the drill all the way through and I lined it up so that it was directly in the middle and then I drilled the hole through the other side and it was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be probably using the wrong wire to do this but I didn't want to waste it because this is going to come apart anyways I didn't want to waste any good thread or fire line or whatever beading wire I use so I figured this is something I can take apart and this is really cheap so I wasn't going to worry about it now I've got really th small wrists so I think I'm like a six and a half to a six and three quarters and I think I read in so many different places where people say that a seven seven and a half is the average wrist so this should fit a little loose on me although if I like it a lot I may not want to get rid of it <coughs> excuse me I don't know how we got sick again and my grandkids were over today so they kind of dragged me into the yard and I swam with them for a while and honestly I felt really good today so this just kind of hit tonight and my daughter it hit her tonight as well so hopefully it's just a quick relapse I'm gonna take a bunch of vitamin C and some zinc and some D3 and we'll see if we can kick it Oops, what did I do here? Boy. As you can see, I'm still covered in alcohol ink. I'm washing dishes and everything and have not been able to get it off of my fingers. <coughs> Okay, so I think we just got one more to go. Alright, please tell me I didn't screw up. I didn't. Yep, just one more. And then we'll back up that camera a little bit. Sorry to be so in your face. Oh, no, I don't want to go through that yet. This is actually my first donut bracelet I've made. I might go a little smaller to like a, a three quarter of an inch. This is a an inch size donut. I think, you know, I may not have them at a three quarter of an inch. But I might have to design one because I like my bracelets a little small, not too chunky. All right, so we're going to try and get this as tight as we can. And again, yes, this is coming apart, so I'm not really I'm not really worried about that, but I do want to make it at least tight enough that I can show you what it looks like. So we're gonna do that one more time. So far so good on the tightness. Uh -oh. It's just really thin, so it wants to get away from me here. All right, so we're just gonna nip this off. And there you go. So this is another way you can make a bracelet. 
Okay, so I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to put it on. I love toggle clasps because it's so much easier for me and my fingers to get them to work. So there we go. So it's a little big, which I guess is okay. It doesn't come off the wrist, but I really like it. I think it looks really cool. And then this is the buffalo head. We ended up going with a two inch one. I made a two inch and I really like that. Um, I would love to be able to put little holes in it for a nostril, but I'm wondering if I can decorate it with something, I don't know, something silver over it. You know, this would also be something that would look cool if you made like a cabochon. And I know this is not a cab, but we're just going to kind of act like it is. Let's see if I can form one. I don't think I can form it as big as I need it. But it'll give you an idea where I'm going with this. It'd be kind of like one of those pictures, you know, that you see of people that have like the little heads on a, a stand in their house when they go hunting. I don't know what you would call those. I am not a hunter. But you know, when people have the deer heads mounted or whatever you want to call it, you know, so you could do something like that also and probably mount it like that on the back of it. Who knows? But there's all kinds of ideas you can do it. But that's what I've got. My granddaughter says I should put two holes here and um, just make a necklace with that. So we'll play around with that. But all these are going to go in the tumbler um, for about a day or so. We're going to get them really nice and pretty. And just for a quick, quick look, if I were to resin it, you'll see the difference. Um, I'm probably going to resin this. It depends on how polished we can get this, but I love resin on stuff like this, and I think it makes a really nice shine compared to just plain Jane. So that's it. I'm sorry it wasn't what I was expecting to give you. I'm sorry that I just kind of flaked. Uh, hopefully I'll feel better. I know it's going to be the weekend soon, and it's going to be a holiday, so I don't know when I'm going to be back. So I wanted to get this up for you. So there is my contribution for the night. Hope you guys have a great week. Stay healthy, stay safe, and we will talk to you guys soon. Have a good night. Bye.